And the conference committee listened to last year's feedback, because we had an excellent conference last yeah. year. And I think what they've come up with today is a very exciting agenda for us. And as you heard Helen say, we've got 30 presentations showing the diversity of uh, excellence in practice. But we also have uh, a number of posters, 57 have been shortlisted for your uh, consideration today, and they are displayed on the left side of the hall. Please do spend some time having a look at what uh, the posters are showing, and if you can, get hold of the author and ask them some questions about why they are doing uh, what they're doing in their area. Now much has happened since we were together here uh, last year, I think most significantly, we've come through one of the hardest winters that, uh, in terms of both temperature and challenges, but it has meant that our services have been under extraordinary pressure. And I'd like to take this opportunity with you in front of me to say a real thank you on behalf of Welsh Government and for the people of Wales to say your hard work and commitment, um, it must be very trying when the physical and emotional demands uh, of everyday work are compounded by some of the things that we were thrown at us this winter. So thank you all very much. Uh, I do really mean that. Now, I've been out and about visiting and I've been uh, very impressed with the, the enthusiasm and warmth of the people that I have met. I've done some unusual visits this year. I've spent some time with blood donation nurses, been out to the Flying Star Centre, been serenaded by children, which was absolutely wonderful. I've been to spend a morning with the uh, consultant nurse for the homeless and sat through her morning surgery, seeing people come in off the streets and see the care and passion she gave to very, very vulnerable people in society. I've visited acute sectors, community, mental health, and everywhere I've gone, I've been so impressed with what I've seen. My one visit that um, I will spend a moment talking about is I went to Park Prison, which is just outside Bridge End, uh, which has quite a lot of uh, young male offenders uh, there. And one of the things that struck me about that visit was how the nurses had got the prisoners involved and engaged in preventing bloodborne viruses. Uh, the spread of uh, disease in, in that community is quite profound. And it was the prisoners who had actually come up with the poster displays and had uh, advised how best they could be treated. It was proper engagement with what I would say is a, a part of the, the patient population that we wouldn't normally think about. And one of the other things I found very interesting about that visit was they have what are called therapy dogs. Two Labradors uh, are there. And what they find is that these very troubled young men, when they're first admitted, often can't talk openly about what's happened to them. But they engage with the animals in a way that actually uh, human contact is very, very challenging. And what struck me was that the dogs have become institutionalised. Because they'll bark at anybody who's not wearing a uniform. It's the patient that the prisoners wear a uniform and the prison officers wear a uniform. So they were kind of a woman in a dress, and my goodness, you're not supposed to be here, which I thought was really quite, uh, quite funny. Now, this year has had some really remarkable moves forward in Wales in terms of progress that have driven up uh, patient care and patient experience. I'm just going to touch on a few of the things that I think have been quite a uh, highlight of, of achievement. Last year, we launched the Oral Health and Hygiene Bundle and removed the ineffectual use of mouth swabs in, in cleaning mouths. It has changed how we think about um, oral care for so many of our patients. We've continued the rollout of transforming care and transforming theatres. This is making a significant change to how we manage the clinical environment, freeing up frontline staff time to care and improving efficiencies uh, within the service. I, when I visited one area, they were saying they were showing in the theatre department um, late starts and early finishes of lists, and it's the surgeons that were getting most upset for being named and changed in this way, and I think it's improving uh, their performance as well as uh, the efficiency of, of the uh, staff there. Now we've had some exciting developments in the use of uh, information technology and gathering and uh, using data. We have the concept of care metrics, 
in our acute sector where we are gathering information to uh, use in real time to help clinical decision making that uh, is right about the here and now. I think we need to move away from relying on audit or inspections that are a snapshot in time. Having you know, an inspection once a year that tells you about particular <coughs> aspects of care, well, that's great, it's, it's important information. But if you're dealing with the here and now, and you want to know today, what's the infection rate like? What's the pressure ulcer um, levels like in this area? How many falls have we had? So care metrics and uh, the development of using information in a really creative way for the here and now, I think is a massive step forward for us and improving our clinical decision making. And then on top of that, we've been able to develop, for the first time, anyone that I know of, a national nursing dashboard. Having care metrics of every area in Wales um, gathering, we're able to pull up certain indicators to a national level, which helps uh, the boards uh, look at performance. And it is my aspiration and that of my colleagues that we turn this initiative that's come from Nursing World into a corporate clinical care dashboard so that health professionals are able, at a board level, to look at performance. And that's uh, one of the things we will continue to develop this year. We've had a renewed focus on the patient experience. And the Minister has just uh, issued a framework out to service that describes how we should be engaging with the people that we care for, how we listen and respond. And for me, this is a, an, an important issue about co-production. It's not about us doing to others. They are part of uh, the arrangements of, of care. So we need to listen to what people are saying to us. We've had an, uh, a very good approach, I think, to how we start thinking about dementia sufferers within our clinical areas. And I'm delighted that June is going to be speaking later on this morning to you about uh, the excellent work that uh, her centre is doing. We have a very elderly population in Wales, and so many people uh, are going to be coming into every aspect of our uh, care <coughs> world that will have dementia to one degree or another. And we need to really think about this. What's the environment like? How do we communicate? What kinds of things do the carers and, and family that come with them, what do they need? We need to start thinking in a, in a different uh, way. And I've got to say, that service is really responding. We're definitely seeing um, an uptake and an understanding spreading across Wales. Things like the butterfly scheme are now becoming uh, quite commonplace in, in a number of areas. We have looked at things around acuity tools. If you look at uh, any aspect of care, who do we need? We need the right number of staff with the right skills, the right skill mix within teams. So for me, actually making sure that we have tools that support service to identify who do we need to have actually in the care environment, giving the care to the patients is, is very uh, important. I and the other nurse directors in, in Wales are spending quite a lot of time and energy in coming up with uh, a range of tools that will help these decisions. And my last example, um, I think uh, one that is very close to my heart, is that we've been engaged in the UK-wide programme on modernising learning disability nursing. These are very vulnerable people that come through our services. Their health outcomes are often much, much worse than the rest of the population. Recent research showed a stark thing. Somebody, a woman who has got a learning disability, is likely to live 20 years less than a woman in the general population. 20 years difference. That's a very, very shocking statistic. So I'm delighted that we're able to support this UK work, but to have specific focused attention here in Wales on this part of the workforce and the way that they care for people. I think it's important, having gone through all those wonderful <coughs> initiatives, to remember that um, sometimes we don't get it right. And this last year has also seen some very high profile uh, stories in the media and two I'll call on the Francis Inquiry into Mid-Staffs, hardly not have this speech without some reference to it, and um, Winterbourne Review <coughs> has also uh, been in the news, and that was an abuse in a um, in private uh, institution for people with learning disability. Shocking, awful <coughs> stories. If you've read any of these, um, you will be like me, horrified to your core about what has happened to individuals going through these services. 
Now, I know those two cases are in England, um, but there are lots of lessons we can learn from massive failures in care such as these. And I think it's very important that all of you ask yourselves, could this happen in my area? What can I do to make sure it doesn't and never happens in my area? And that equally applies to us in Welsh Government. We're taking a, a very hard look at these reports and trying to determine what other things we can do to support service to make sure that we have the right systems and tools in place to make sure that we have excellent care <coughs> for everyone that goes through our, our service. In Wales, I'm afraid to say, we've had ombudsman cases, serious incident reports and inspections that indicate uh, that we too have had some failures. So it's really important that we are not complacent and think, oh, those big reports, they're an England issue, it doesn't apply to us. That's not the case. We get it wrong here too. So <coughs> while we've got some really, really good markers of improvement, infections, healthcare acquired infections are still falling, pressure ulcers are falling, <coughs> very, very low rates now. In some areas like um, ventilator acquired infections are practically non-existent. Fantastic, that's really good. We still not getting it right for everybody in every instance, and it's down to all of us to make sure that we focus on that. Now, today is a day of celebration, so I don't wish to spend a lot of time <coughs> talking about when things go wrong. The way to make things right is to think about good practice, sharing ideas, being motivated and committed, and I know all of you are. You're here today, you're wanting to learn, you're wanting to share, and that really inspires me, it really does. Now, for those of you that were here last year, you may recall I threw out a challenge. I hope some of you actually acted on that challenge. And what did I say? Pick one thing that you hear today. Go away and do something about it. Whether it's to look something up, try something new in your area, get in contact with one of the speakers, do something. So I'm going to restate that challenge to you again this year. Some of you might like to think about taking two things away and doing something. But I hope all of you will take the opportunity to say, do you know what, I'm going to go back with a renewed, renewed enthusiasm to look at what we do in our area and perhaps try to focus on something that will improve care. 